Welcome back to PGA Chain Design. Today we are going to talk about this weaving structure and how can you arrange it within the boundary like a pendant. Are you ready? Let's get started. Before we're gonna start, I just wanna say that bezel setting I've been using in a lot of my other tutorial and you can see on the stone setting playlist, uh, you will find how to do the bezel setting. So today we pretty much just wanna talk about this structure. So that's starting from the scratch. So we're gonna come in at the front view to see how big this pendant is going to be. I would like to use the rectangle for the conic corner and snapping into the zero and roughly maybe about 20 by 30 or bigger or whichever that works for you. Okay, and I wanna have them a little bit rounded. So that's it, this is my border. I'm gonna use the command for align center and bring it back to the zero right there. And next we are going to use the rectangle center and let's go ahead to click in the center and we just need it a little bit bigger than what we have there. All right, so this is as a reference line. Let's go ahead to explode it. Depends on how many row that you like in there. I like to have them about 12 by 12. All right, so the way to do that is we need to rebuild this curve into 13 point and degree three, right? So now with this one, if we turn on the control point, we could pick up every other one there like this. And we can simply looking at the side view and I want to come in out like a 1.3 millimeter and then we'll get some curve like this. Okay. The second one should be completely opposite than this one. So we are going to using the mirror command and snapping right here and mirror like that. Okay. And those two, one of them will be move it down and move it down how much is the equal distance. So I'm going to have that one to divide it by 12. And then we will get those dot over here. Okay. The first curve or whichever curve, uh, it's going to move it down from here to here. All right. So then we will have a curve like this. Okay, notice that those two curves is actually not touching at all. There is one is all the way to the back, the, the other one is opposite. So we want to align to the center and let's type it uh, zero or align like this. So those from the top view you can see is intertwined, right? We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So I'm simply just going to making a copy, so rotate and hit the all key with the gumball. And I'm going to moving that first one to here. All right, so let's take a look. So you may notice that this is not necessary on the peak. So we do need to have the things snapping to the peak. So I'm going to turn on the control point of this one and this one, let's turn on the control point. And this one is going to move from the end point to that point there. This one too is going to move from the end point to that point there. And that will be a correct distance instead of using the divided. As apparently the divided is not so accurate in this case because we go by the peak of the curve. So I'm going to delete those dots there. All right, so one more time, let's take a look on all four view. This two should be aligned in the zero, horizontal zeros. So just type it zero here. And those two on my right view need to be aligned as well. So we want to align vertical center, type it zero as well. Okay, so then we get something like this. So let's give it a try. We're going to take a look if that is correct by piping. So we're going to go ahead and use the pipe 0.5 millimeter and to see like this one is behind coming to the top and that one look correct as well. So then we can start working on our design. I'm going to come over here. So with this curve, let me mark it into the red color. 
we're going to creating a profile. So this profile is going to look like something like this, snapping into the center, and I'm going to snap it right there about this size, coming around it a little bit. I want to give it a point at the center so it's easier for me to making a copy. With this point right here, I'm going to making a copy from this point to this point right there. So then they are in the center. So let's give it a try. We are going to use the command for the sweep one rail. And it's going to go from here, here. The same thing, rail one. And this is a cross section. And we'll get something like that. All right, that look correct. And let's go ahead to pick up this one, the point, and also this curve over there, and then move it outside, making a copy, rotating 90 degree. And this one, we want to snapping into the beginning of that black curve as well. So let's go ahead to using the move command, starting from this point and to the end point, which is the end point over there. And then sometimes it's hard to see. You can always using the wireframe. So now it's easier to see here. That's the first point. And we also need to making a copy from this point and up to this point. OK, so we are going to use the sweep one rail, rail cross section here and the rail and the cross section there. So let me just make them into the red color and double make sure that they look correct. Um, let's go ahead using the ghost view. All right. So now how are we going to copy correctly to the rest of the, first of all, just go ahead to make them into the solid. So we're going to use the cap command to enter. So now they are solid. The second is every time we copy, we need to copy to the peak, right? So I need to know where the peak is. So we're going to use the wireframe is easier for us to see with this curve that's turned on the control point. So you can see the point here and here, and that's for, for our guideline. We're going to have this one is using the array linear and we want to get six of them. So let's go from this point to this point, right? So then we'll get something like that. That extra, we can always delete it. All right, the same thing over here. I'm going to turn on the control point for this curve right there. And we're going to pick up this one and this one. Again, using the linear array, we are going to go from this peak to this peak there. All right, so then again, we got some extra there. We can always delete it. And let's take a look on the render view. All right, very beautiful weaving there. And once you're done and it's everything look right to you, they are touching and let's go ahead to Boolean Union. All right, so now they become one piece. Double make sure this closed solid poly surface and we're going to come back to the top view. We simply want to use this close curve that we have and let's go ahead to make them into the solid by extruded planar curve straight and then we'll have this solid there. OK, so with those two, we just need the one that's intersect. So we're going to use a Boolean intersection of this one out of this one. Cool. All right. So now we have this. We can kind of just hiding every other things there and just dealing with this guy. Now we need to having a boulder. So I will coming over here and use the colony corner on my rectangle one more time. And we are going to create something like this and also moving this one by move command to snap snapping somewhere in the center. Right. Simply just using Oh, look, that's tiny things there. It's not a close problem. We actually want to move in a little bit. So we will have enough to intersect uh, when we're bowling together. So let's go ahead to use a sweep one rail. And this is the rail. This is the cross section. And whoops, 
we get something like this. I was working on the top, you never noticed that my curve is actually not in the right place. So with this curve on my top view, I'm going to project it to C plane. And I intentionally want to leave this mistake here. So ho hoping that you will make the same mistake that I do. If you do, you know how to solve it. All right, so sweep one rail one more time and we'll get something like this. All right, so that way, if you don't like the thickness, you can still 1D scale it down until you like the way. Once you have done, you can put the stone into anywhere. Uh, I kind of like to have a filling the gap and also put the bell and also the chain for the rendering purpose. Then you will get something like this. If you like the way that I doing the 3D model, you are welcome to check out my course. I have four different courses on my website and I also have a membership for you to join if you're interested. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.